The year is 2017. The world economy has collapsed. Food, natural resources and oil are in short supply. This dystopian world is now ruled by a police state with an iron hand. Television is controlled by the state, and a sadistic show called The Running Man has become the most popular show in history. Like the Colosseum of the future, bloodthirsty killers hunt contestants for the enjoyment of the public. This is the story of Captain Ben Richards, his journey of survival, and how he changed everything. Captain Richards is piloting a chopper with a group of soldiers on their way suppress a group of unarmed rioters in Bakersfield. He confirmed that the thousands of rioters were unarmed, but his orders were to eliminate them all anyway, to which he refused. The higher-ups then ordered the other soldiers to detain Richards. After a brief scuffle, Richards was subdued. Some time later, Richards is now a prisoner working at a steel factory. All prisoners wear a restraint collar that explodes when they go beyond the sonic line sensors. One of the prisoners, Harold, took note of the deactivation code and alerted Richards. He then started a planned fight with another prisoner, William, which they both turned into a full-scale riot. While everyone was busy beating and killing each other up, Harold is trying to deactivate the sensors. The code wasn't working, since the signal won't reach the fences. They all went outside to deactivate the sensors, but was only partly able to do it. An impatient prisoner ran ahead which triggered his collar, killing him. They eventually managed to fully shut it down, and everyone escaped the prison factory. The trio made their way into Los Angeles where they meet up with their resistance contact, Stevie. An old man, Mick, started to remove William's collar, all while talking about how the public should hear the truth and not just TV propaganda. Harold said that it's possible by hacking the network satellite, but Mick mentioned that they can't even find the code or the uplink to do it. After the collar was removed, it was detonated safely in a concrete box. When it's Richard's turn, Mick was hesitant. He said that Richards was a cop who destroyed this city and even earned the moniker, the Butcher of Bakersfield, for killing 60 people. Harold said that it's media propaganda and is most likely a lie. Richards retorted that the resistance is all talk and no action, and to just do the job. Mick, seeing that it's not worth the trouble, agreed anyway. The next day Richards refused the offer to join the resistance and left the base to find his brother. The renowned Damon Killian steps out of his car to cheers from the crowd. He heads into the studio control room while getting reports from his assistants. Killian and his team are discussing criminal candidates for their next Running Man show, but he said none of the options are physically fit and wouldn't survive very long. Suddenly he noticed a security feed from the prison escape and sees Richards running. Admiring his running form and physique, he claims that he's the perfect candidate and he has to have him on the show. Ben Richards, disguised as a construction worker, infiltrated his brother's apartment but no one is home. When the door opened, instead of his brother, a woman entered the apartment. While she watches the news about Richards' escape, he suddenly appeared out of nowhere and held her down much to her surprise. Richards asks where his brother is, and the woman Amber told him that he was sent for re-education a few weeks ago. Richards then used Amber's travel card to book them both a flight to Hawaii. At the airport, Richards is quietly holding Amber hostage. The got stopped at security, since only one of them has a ticket, but the guard let them through, cause the people in line are getting irritable. On their way to the plane, however, Amber escapes, and Richards tries to run away. He ran on the tarmac, but no matter how fast he is, he got caught. Finally back at home, Amber watches the news which reported that Richards shot people which Amber knew was a lie. Richards was taken straight to Killian. Killian coerces Richards to join as a volunteer in the next Running Man show. Richards initially refused, but Killian actually had William and Harold hostage. They'll both be sent in his place if he does not. He has no choice but to agree. Richards was then prepped for the show. He was given various injections and was sent back to his cell afterwards. The next day, the people are excited for the next Running Man episode. The production is much grander than before with amazing dancers, people from all over and scrambling to get their bets in. Richards is led away to the stage and sees Amber on his way there. After signing the paperwork, he stabbed the annoying agent with the pen. The egotistical Damon Killian riled the crowds by showing the untrue edited footage of Richards killing people in Bakersfield. Richards was then brought out to the stage to the booze of the people. 
He's then stripped down to his suit and loaded to a car. But Killian didn't keep his word and instead included William and Harold in the game. Just before Richards was deployed, he gave this word of warning to Killian. I'll be back. The jets are fired up and away they go. The cars travel in such blinding speeds through a tunnel, doing twists and turns, before Annette stopped them. Killian asked the audience which stalker will hunt the trio first and she picks Sub-Zero. Meanwhile, Amber was on a mission to know the truth. She makes her way into the studio control room. The TV shows Killian presenting the past Running Man champions, now enjoying themselves in a beachy paradise. She snuck into the archives when no one is looking. Amber eventually found the raw footage of what really happened that night in Bakersfield. But suddenly she was found out and apprehended. Welcome to our first fight of the night, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ben Dover. And I'm Mo Lester. It looks like our trio has now entered the arena. What can we expect here, Ben? Well, Mo, our stalker is none other than Sub-Zero. This hunkering piece of man bear might look cute and cuddly on the outside, but he's ferocious on the inside. Wow, look at him slice that gong like it was a piñata on a starving kid's party. True that, Mo. Well, it looks like the stage is a skating rink, so clearly our contestants are already at a disadvantage. Yes, and now they have nowhere to go. Oh my, did you see that, Ben? I sure did. That's the Sub-Zero famous triple hit. Oh, ooh, look, they're trying to get away. Look at them go at that slippery ice. Sub-Zero is at his element here, Mo. Just toying with Richards and the rest of them might come on. Oh, poor Harold getting dragged all the way just to get caged. You poor, poor man. Hey, looks like Richards found a chance to get away. Well, not on Sub-Zero's watch. That puck packs a punch, I'll tell you that. Richards will now think twice before trying that again. It seems William didn't get the memo and tries to slip past. Oh, he missed it by that much. Let's try that again. Wow, he's fast for a big fella. Here comes Richards saving the day. Now, where did he come from, Ben? Oh, hold on. It looks like he's up to something. He's getting that pipe of barbed wire. Oh, no, wait, Sub-Zero, this doesn't look good. Stop right now. Too late, Mo. He going too fast. He got caught in the wire. And now Richards is trying to end it. This is just hard to look at Ben. I just couldn't believe it. Richards really deserves the title butcher of Bakersfield. Our very first stalker death since the show began. How sad for the criminals to win. We'll be back for more death and destruction later. Be right back. With Sub-Zero dead, Killian is under pressure from the government. Back on stage, he asked another audience member to choose the next stalker. He can't decide so Killian decided to bring out two for the next match. He chose Buzzsaw, the last year's champion, and the Chainsaw Maniac, and then Dynamo, the electricity-wielding madman. As one more surprise, Killian brought out Amber. Killian accused Amber of conspiring with Richards and of being his lover. She was then put in the car despite her protests. While making their way through the arena, Harold notices an antenna and realizes that it's a camera relay. Further ahead were more camera relays, which point to the middle of the game zone. He deduced that the satellite uplink must be there. Harold and William heads there to jam the signal. They soon meet up with Amber but are immediately attacked by stalkers. We're back ladies and gentlemen to round two of The Running Man. I'm Ben Dover. And I'm Mo Lester. Looks like we have ourselves a little team up here. What do we know about our stalkers? Well, Mo, firstly we got this homicidal chainsaw-wielding beefcake, Buzzsaw. He's sure to chop up of those criminals like Chuck Norris on a bad day. And we have Dynamo. This overweight Christmas tree can send sparks flying and be festive all at the same time. He battle is now underway. It looks like the duo is planning to split the group. And split the group they did, Ben. Now what is Harold stopping for? Did he find something important? Well, he was muttering something about uplink shenanigans earlier. And here we have Richards and William. And boom, Buzzsaw came out of nowhere and clipped William. Richards it trying to help him, Ben. Oh no, he should have helped himself instead. Yes, Mo, look at him enjoying the ride. While he's being dragged around like a ragdoll, the butcher of Bakersfield tied up the rope and sent Buzzsaw flying. The brains of this guy, and not just bronze. Is Buzzsaw dead? Surprise, mother effer. He's not. Here have a chainsaw. And now they're going at it mano e mano. 
but none of them are getting the upper hand. Well, it looks like Richards is getting the lower hand, he he he. Oh no, Buzzsaw is getting overpowered. I don't like where this is going, Mo. Major ouch, Ben, right in the family jewels. This gives a whole new meaning to Banana Split. Harold is up to something, I know it. It sure looks like he's trying to hack the satellite uplink. Boom, not on Dynamo's watch. Oh, look at that. Our big boy is about to have himself some fun. Well, not on Richard's watch. This walking Tesla coil better delivers. What are you talking about, Mo? He's lighting up Richard's like the last 4th of July firecracker. Richard's is running away. Well, this is the Running Man show, Mo. The Dynamo says why run when you can ride. The crowds are going wild. How hard is it to chase a man on foot with a car, Mo? Cut Dynamo some slack, Ben. He probably weighs as much as that car. Oh my, sometimes I wonder how these stalkers have survived for so long. Now Dynamo is in a spot of trouble. The crowds are waiting for blood, Mo. But it's blood they won't get, Ben. What a class act, Mo. We'll be back for more action, folks. Stay tuned. Harold's heroic act got Richards the satellite uplink code in exchange for his life. Unfortunately, William also didn't survive his wounds from Buzzsaw, he asked him to take the code to Mick. Then Killian suddenly appeared on screen and offered Richard a job as a stalker. Richard blatantly refused. Back at the station, the next stalker is introduced. And we're back to regular programming. I'm Ben Dover. And Mo Lester here. So it's just Richards and Amber left in this game. Yes, Mo, and they have to be careful now cause their next stalker is none other than Fireball. Fireball? Isn't he that hot-tempered guy with a barbecue fetish? The very same Mo, and now he has a jetpack of all things. Wow, look at him go! Fireball is really turning up the heat. Richards is stalling by throwing drums at him, giving Amber a chance to escape. Doesn't seem to affect Fireball though. Oh, those drums are loaded. Good thing Fireball is fireproof. Looks like Amber has lost Mo. Yes, and she's about to stumble into our little secret. What secret? That the past Running Man champions were actually burned alive rather than getting a tan on a beach somewhere? Yes, Ben, that secret. Well, it's too late for that now. That's okay, Ben, it seems that Amber won't live long enough to tell the tale. And here comes Richards ruining everything. He cut Fireball's gas line, Ben. And Richards lights him up like a literal fireball. This is crazy. Richards is going to put us out of a job. I hope not. We'll see you on the other side, folks. It's pandemonium back at the station. With three stalkers dead, Killian is losing the support of the people. He ordered Captain Freedom to go next, but he refused since he wanted to fight with only his bare hands. But Killian is already desperate and sends the captain away. Instead, his team edited part of the video earlier to make it look like Captain Freedom killed Richard and Amber. While looking for the uplink station, Richards and Amber got trapped. Surprisingly, it was Mick who came out of the door. The Resistance actually has a base within the arena. Amber told Mick that she has the satellite codes. On TV they see the edited footage of them getting killed by Captain Freedom. Mick announced that this will be the right time to storm the studio. Richards decided to join the Resistance. With Richards leading the assault team, they managed to get in easily. Mick was able to successfully hack the satellite and hijack the studio's feed. They exposed the truth about the previous Running Man champions and also what really happened at the Bakersfield incident. While Killian is trying to placate the crowd, Richards and the Resistance stormed in. A guard opened fire and mayhem ensued, the crowds in panicking and running everywhere. Meanwhile, Amber encountered Dynamo again. Just as he was about to assault her, she managed to shoot the sprinklers which electrocuted him. When everything's quiet, Killian tried to sneak away but got found out. Killian still tried to negotiate to save his life. Richards nonchalantly loads him in the car and activated the rockets. Killian speeds through the tunnel, but unfortunately, there were no nets to save him, and he crashed on his own billboard. With the people now on their side, Richards and Amber meets up and ended the scene with a kiss.